For the next six weeks, I'm going to be backpacking by myself through India. First impression is wow. Starting in Delhi, I'll have three weeks exploring the cities of the north, followed by another three weeks in the beaches and backwaters of the south. Atmosphere is a crazy mix of people who are here to watch the ceremony and other people just trying to sell stuff. So we did the cliche thing of doing the photo with the pinning on top and we absolutely nailed it. Just have a look at this, it's Killed amazing. It. Killed it. I've got an amazing view of the city and I've just had about 20 different people ask to have a photo with me. Take selfie, one selfie. First full day in Jaipur. Now there's a little typo on the menu with a drink. I hope it's a typo. A bit of a diet cock. Diet cock. Everyone I've met has been absolutely raving about this place called Hampi. This is like a giant playground of boulders and old ruins, temples. I love it. I'm here in Jai Salma. Ganesh Travel, Jaisalmer, doing best camel safari in town. Please check it out. I definitely think I'm gonna have a full body massage when I get back. And I mean full body, because I'm in pain. So we just went for a walk into the woods. The idea is he's like some spiritual guy. The people give him donations, they bring him weed. He's just sitting around all day getting high. And he's been doing it for 10 years. I went on the Ganges River. Going around like in a, a pro. Go, going around in a circle though. Let me just give you a 360 view or something. <laughs> Right then, India. So this is going to be my first time in the country and it's a place I've been planning to go to for quite a few years because I remember three years ago when I was just about to set off on the HK2MY trip and some of my friends would ask me, oh Carl, which countries are you going to? And I'd be like, oh, it's a massive trip, absolutely huge. And I would list out all 20 different countries in four continents. And at the end of it, some of them would go, wow, so you're not going to India? And I was like, I just listed 20 different Biggest trip ever, come on. So now I'm finally going to India and obviously it's a huge country and you can't really expect to take it all in within six months, never mind the six weeks I'm gonna have, hence the name A Taste of India. So how did I come up with the route? Well, I've basically planned it around seeing the main tourist highlights of India. And the reason I've done that is one, I think it'll be a good introduction to the country and two, if I go and see these famous places then it's not that I'll have them out of the way, that sounds negative, because I do want to go check them out, I really want to see them, but it means if I go back to India another time, I can just venture off the beaten track, go wherever I fancy, not worry about ticking off these must-see sites. So the first half is in the north, starting in Delhi and then traveling around loads of different cities, as well as into the deserts of Rajasthan, and I'm going to be traveling mostly by train. Now, I've read that traveling by train in India is not only the best way to see India, it also could be a bit of a pain in the ass, because the tickets book out really quickly in advance, and since I'm only going to be in each town for two or three days, that basically means as soon as I arrive in a city, I'm going to have to book my next onward ticket, which isn't going to give me much flexibility in the itinerary. So I was wondering, is there any way I can just pre-book all my tickets and not have to worry about any of that once I get there? And so I went onto seat61.com, which is the best website for any information about trains anywhere in the world. And they recommended a UK company where I could pre-book all my train tickets for the north which means I'm going to have to stick to an exact itinerary. So to counteract that, once I get down to the south of India, I'm going to have no itinerary whatsoever. So I've got a rough route planned of like Goa, Hampi, Kerala backwaters, but how long I spend in each place, how I get from one place to another, I've no idea yet. I'm just going to figure that out once I get there. So there's two halves to the trip, very different places, very different vibes, and two very different styles of traveling. Now another thing to know is I'm going to be traveling by myself. And before you ask where James is, He's still in South America, he's still traveling around, working out there, making loads of friends. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, he can't breathe! So yeah, I'm sure he's fine, but um, what that means is, yeah, I'll be completely on my own, don't know anyone out there, but that's exciting. I'm going to a brand new crazy country and just hopefully meet some really cool people at hostels or wherever along the way. But that does present some challenges with the video though, because normally if I'm traveling with a mate, we can film each other, but now I've just got to film myself and then hopefully get other people involved as I go. 
And there's one last strange thing about this trip is that I'm flying out on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas. So I'm gonna be going from Christmas mode, you know, like wearing Christmas jumpers and going to parties and having roast dinners and spending time with the family watching Die Hard. So I'm gonna be switching straight from that to bang, you're in backpacking mode. India, new country, it's crazy. You're off on your adventure, so yeah, it's gonna be weird, but let's just go do it. All right, I've arrived in New Delhi. Um, I paid for the hostel airport transfer just to make life easier when I landed. And even though there's a guy with the sign my name on, I still had to ask him a password to make sure it wasn't a scam. And the password was Delhi Belly. You got the password? Yeah, Delhi Belly. Delhi Belly, nice. I like it. <laughs> it's, a, it's an encouraging start. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to go into town and explore the city and see the sights. So uh, wish me luck. Old Delhi, very different vibe to New Delhi. Very, very different vibe. It's like stepping back in time. So guess why it's called Old Delhi? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. Oh. This is kind of what I was hoping for. It's a street of endless little markets, selling all kinds of food and clothes and so many different colours, different smells, different looking faces. And yeah, everything you look at is just fascinating. Guy there just dragging two bodies. Two people are alive with their arms and legs all twisted up and like they got this announcement on the loop, I'm guessing, asking for money or whatever. But, uh, yeah, pretty weird. Not even 100% sure where I'm going, but that's like half the fun of it, it's just getting lost. I think I might have found the Jamid Masid, is how you pronounce it. It's like a big mosque. So it turns out I didn't know where I was going, I was completely lost. What I thought I saw wasn't what it was, but it's okay, it's all part of the fun. I know where I am now, that's Delhi Gate, which means the Red Fort's this way. The Red Fort was built in 1648 and gets its name because it's a massive fort that's red. The Mughal emperors lived here for 200 years before the British rule of India began in 1858. And today, it attracts tens of thousands of visitors every year. So this is the queue to get in. I think if you're a foreigner, you can get a VIP ticket, which means you skip the queue. But all the Indians, yeah, they got a queue for hours just to get in the fort. The queue's fucking crazy. They're all crammed up to each other like sardines. Unbelievable. But yeah, I'm not queuing to get in there. Gonna be doing plenty of forts, plenty of palaces on this trip. Today's more just about exploring Delhi and seeing what's about. The only way to get across this road is just go for it. Like a human version of Frogger. That's the lunch queue. Food's gotta be good there if they're all queuing for the same place. It's so cool when you walk around and there's so many things you just don't understand. Like, was there some special significance to the water handing out there or were they just handing out water? No idea. But that's the fun of it. You just don't know what's going on. You just have to sort of take it in and observe. But this is great fun. I'm loving it. The next day, I went to explore some more sites with a couple of friends from the hostel. This is who I'm traveling with right now. <laughs> Brilliant. Our first stop was the Kutub Binar, which I didn't even know what it was, but I hope to learn about once we got there. Okay, so this place predates Taj Mahal. I know that. It was built in the 12th century, I think. So it's one thing we found out that it's old. Yeah, yeah, no shit. I knew the place featured some tombs and old mosques, but Yelena and Rhea tried speaking to a security guard to find out some more. Did you guys actually learn anything? Actually, I didn't really understand. Okay. Rhea, did you learn anything? <laughs> I've been asking. I want to be disrespectful. Just had my first random dude asking me for a photo. Needed a selfie with me. We're trying to find out some facts, so I've been making friends with young schoolboys. <clears throat> Are you want to be in the photo? Say hello. 
I mostly just want to check my credit like a cricket though. बहुत मजे आते हैं खेलने में ऐसे जो कुत्ते छक्के मार हो घूमिए जाएगी बोल. It's weird. Everyone either wants to be in a photo with me or they want me to take their photo. Photo. Hey selfie, one selfie. You want a selfie? Oh, okay, hang on. Just getting mugged. Everyone wants a picture with me. Kind of weird. Just it's a video. So just everyone say hello. Hello. They all want my picture with me. I don't know why. Okay, some kid just asked me for my autograph. That's just like the most worthless thing in the world. Our next stop would have been the Lotus Temple if it wasn't shut, so we head over to the India Gate via the Presidential Palace. It's the uh, President of India's crib, that's where he lives. <laughs> Alright, just arrived at India Gate. Our tuk tuk driver just now explained that my name Carl in Hindi means tomorrow. In Hindi it means Carl, it's like a tomorrow. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so basically everyone here thinks I've got a really pretentious name, like, Hi, my name's tomorrow, what's your name? Attracting the animals again. What is it with you and animals? <laughs> you got your rabies jab, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Just saying, this place kind of reminds me of Paris. Not just because it looks like an Indian Arc de Triomphe, but also there's people trying to sell cheap souvenirs everywhere. Maybe later, later. I'm okay. He would like to try. No, I'm good. <laughs> uh, I still get mobbed by all my fans here, just wanting more photos. It's a tough life, you gotta deal with it. Bye bye. <laughs> I do love the enthusiasm of the people here. Like, everyone, they don't just want their photo taken with you, they want you just to take a photo of them, just for the sake of it. Doing good, guys. <laughs> There's a nice vibe here, it's very, very nice. People have been so friendly, polite, you know, willing to share information, so now I'm just gonna go for a little wonder and then head back to the hostel. After a couple of days in Delhi, I took a short flight to one of the oldest cities in the world, Varanasi. Well, we've arrived in Varanasi. This is just epic. Yeah, definitely not in Kansas anymore. Bloody hell. Absolutely incredible. I think we've officially arrived now. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, yeah, we're in India now. Taxi ride from the airport to like an hour, just getting weaving through, getting busier and busier streets. It's absolute mayhem. Just dodging tuk-tuks, bikes, cars, plenty of cows. Yeah, I feel a little bit more relaxed now. <laughs> I wasn't relaxed after that taxi drive. Yeah. We've arrived a bit late to see the sunset on the river, but we're going to see the evening ceremony tonight where they burn all the bodies. I can't wait to explore these streets, it's going to be so cool. The main key is not to get run over. Pretty mental. Basically got a 10 minute walk down here to get down to the river. See some of the ceremonies going on. Just keep walking and we don't die. It's just getting busier and busier and busier. People come up to you trying off your tours all the time. Oh, please come and see my shop. Oh, we'll get there. We will get there. I think this is going to be incredible. The evening ceremony, known as the Worship to Fire, is performed daily by Hindu priests. Every day, over 200 people are cremated by the river Ganges, with their ashes put into the river. They believe dying in this sacred city of Varanasi brings them salvation. The atmosphere is a crazy mix of people who are here to watch the ceremony and are really sort of quiet in the moment. And other people just trying to sell stuff, begging. Someone just offered to give me a shave. Are you good to Hello. <laughs> just had someone shake my hand and then start to massage it and say, hey, do you want a massage? It's like, no, 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 just give me my hand back. So yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty random. Like, like a mixture of two things happening at once. But yeah, it's an incredible experience for you though.
Right, I'm nearly back at the hostel and I am exhausted. It's just fucking manic, just beeping horns everywhere and everyone's trying to sell you something. You make eye contact with someone straight away. Tuk tuk. Do you want to go to my store? Do you want to do this? I mean, I've had that before in Thailand, but this is a completely other level. It's just insane. But it's a bit frustrating because you want to be able to interact with people, but all they want to do is sell you stuff instead of just having a genuine conversation. But everything just leads to, please buy this. But you know, I'm so I'm exhausted, but you know, the whole point is... Okay, gonna get run over. The whole point of it is supposed to be an adventure, so it's not supposed to be fun and easy, but uh... Yeah, we definitely dived in the deep end here, because it is mental, but looking forward to tomorrow anyway. And I found a place at Baroness that sells beer as well, so score. It's a uh, quarter to six in the morning here in Varanasi, and in 15 minutes we're going to do the sunrise boat tour on the Ganges River, which should be incredible. But I am exhausted <laughs> because I'm still jet lagged, so I didn't really fall asleep till one. Then I had my alarm set for half five, but I didn't need it because at 5.15 all these bells and all this music started happening all around the town. It's like a wake-up call. And that went on for like five minutes and then it stopped and then all this morning call to prayer started all over the city. So we're going to have two hours on the river and then I'll come back and shower and actually wake up. But yeah, this should be good. But it's such a weird, strange but incredible place. <laughs> The guide we paid for never showed up, so we just got to find another boat. We'll try not to get ripped off. After much haggling, we've made it. All right, finally on the way. I don't know if we're actually going to see the sunrise because there's so much fog, <laughs> pollution, but it's still pretty amazing to finally be on the boat. That's the that's the sunrise right there. That way? What is the iPhone says the iPhone says the sun's that way. The river Ganges is revered as a god with the power to wash you of your sins. Because of this, people will come every day to bathe in the river, despite it being severely polluted. And this isn't just pollution from urban waste, there's dead animals, ashes from those who've been cremated. Plus, if a pregnant woman or young child dies, instead of being cremated, the bodies are just placed into the river. I still can't believe they're bathing in it. It's like the most disgusting water ever. This guy's going for a morning swim. These are my favorite buildings, so check these out. These palaces were built by Hindu kings so they could spend their final days along the Ganges before they're cremated here. This one was built in 1912, which is relatively recent considering there's evidence that the earliest settlements here began in the 20th century BC. Hi. 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 Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year. The sunrise is just peeking through the clouds. Coming to the end of our boat ride, it was absolutely beautiful. It's kind of a, it's a strange beauty to it because you have to sort of filter out some of the things you see. But the sunrise ended up being spectacular. Now we've got away from the main bit, it's actually really quite peaceful. It's really beautiful. The buildings and the architecture is what makes it for me. It's just spectacular. So big thumbs up. I think we're going to go walk down the river now and see some more stuff. We head over to one of the main ghats, where I got roped into a private tour to get up close and learn all about the cremation ceremonies. You can't film any of it because you know it's like showing up at someone's funeral with a camera. But uh, it was very interesting. Of course, then he wanted to show me his shop where he makes some fine silks and stuff. And now I'm in this alleyway and got to figure out my way home. But it was a great experience anyway. Varanasi is such an intense place. I spent most of the rest of the day just chilling at the hostel. In the evening, we head back onto the river, but this time I had a go at rowing the boat. Not bad. Rowing on the Ganges River. Going around like in a, a pro. Go, going around in a circle, though. Well, just give you a 360 view, that's all. <laughs> just so you can see all the surroundings. Perfect, eh? You're rounding. Yeah, yeah. I, at least I try. I went a little bit further. <laughs> 
So I did this with the Gangai speech. <laughs> How did I do? Was I good? Very good. See? Very good. That's all right. Two, two. 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 There we go. Virus, virus, already good. Yeah. I think that'll do. I think that was a good tour of the river. Do you want to come back? <laughs> I think the best way to describe my time in Varanasi is kind of like a love-hate relationship, but by the end of it, it was definitely leaning more towards the love because whenever you get out on that river, you get to sort of appreciate the best of Varanasi, which is all the beauty of it, without all the hassle and all the chaos of the crowds. Last night I was saying how was, the atmosphere was spoiled a little bit by people always coming to you trying to sell you stuff, but back here, there's none of that. And so you just get to step back, enjoy it, and it's just magical, I loved it. So right there is where they cremated Gandhi. So it's kind of an important spot. And also one thing I noticed on the first night, the place was so intense and I was a bit like, this is hard work. But by the second night when I walked back, I just let it all breeze over me. Yeah, it was a steep learning curve, but I sort of began to enjoy the town even more. So yeah, I think I do love Varanasi in its own kind of weird way. So beautiful. Love it. Love it. From Varanasi, I made the short flight back to Delhi to celebrate New Year's Eve. Five, four, three, two, one. After this, I was heading south to Agra to see the Taj Mahal, which meant it was time for my first Indian train journey. First train station. All right, I found my train, but my carriage is right the other end. So now this is my carriage because there's a bit of paper with my name on right here. It's me. It's me. So we're in the right place. It's a good start. Yeah. Absolute chaos though. There's like hardly anyone on the platform to tell you what's what. I found like one person working here. So yeah, a little bit of stress, but that's all part of fun, I guess. It was just a short three hour train journey to Agra, and upon arrival, I jumped straight into a tuk tuk to take me to my hostel. This is Bobby. Bobby, my tuk tuk driver, is a good yes. man. Good yes, man. Sir. Yes, sir. I'm a good man. <laughs> I try to do my best. <laughs> Thank you. And I hope you enjoy my city. That afternoon, I booked a tour with Bobby to take me to the main attractions in Agra, which would finish with seeing the Taj Mahal at sunset from across the river. All right, first stop of the day, Agra Fort. It's pretty beautiful. Probably had about 50 different offers to have a guide, but we're just going to do it by ourselves, try and figure some things out. It's my first glimpse of the Taj Mahal. I'm just about to see it through the smog, even though it's a terrible view at the minute. Yeah, finally seeing it, it's pretty awesome. Next up on the tour, it's the baby Taj Mahal. Little baby, little mini Taj Mahal. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so we're across the river from the Taj Mahal to see it for sunset. It's pretty incredible actually finally seeing it up close. You kind of have to remind yourself you're actually here. You're not just looking at the picture, if that makes any sense. It's like gotta have a moment and take it in. I'm basically just going to turn the camera off for a few minutes, stand here and enjoy because it's just beautiful. Tomorrow morning, I'll be going to the Taj Mahal for sunrise, which meant it was going to be a very early start. It is 5.30 in the morning and we're heading to the west gate of Taj Mahal. And I'm fucking knackered, but trust me, I'm excited. Are you buzzing? Oh, I'm feeling great. <laughs> but yeah, we think it's this way. We had to wait around an hour before we could buy our tickets. And then once we joined the queue, I immediately lost Bianca as it made men and women join separate lines. Waiting like cattle for the gate to open. It's like you're waiting for a gig or something. Oh, we're moving. After finally making it inside, I found out I wasn't allowed to film there, which meant I was going to have to do a stealth video. Filming in the no filming zone. Living on the edge here in Taj Mahal. 
even though I lost Bianca in the queue, I luckily bumped into some other Aussies from the hostel. So we did the cliche thing of doing the photo with the pinning on top, and we absolutely nailed it. Just have a look at this. It's amazing. Killed it. Killed it. Fucking killed it. I'm going to head off. You haven't taken That's, one yet. Just just take I haven't even taken and pressed the button. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna be here all day. <laughs> That's perfect, guys. Yeah, nailed it. Well done. So this is how clean a Taj Mahal is when it first opens. Yeah. This is the best effort. Yeah. <laughs> Come to my place and you shit on my car. <laughs> so I can't really do too much talking to the camera, really, because uh, I'm not allowed to be filming. So there's definitely going to be a place for voiceover facts. The Taj Mahal was commissioned in 1632 by Emperor Shah Jahan for his wife. Her tomb lies in the center of the palace, which is now universally regarded as a monument to love. Now, before you get too teary-eyed, keep in mind she was his favorite of three wives. Plus, there's a myth that after the palace was completed, he had the architect killed because he didn't want anyone else to build a palace like this. Time to get the foot gear on. It took 21 years to build the Taj Mahal, employing some 20,000 different artisans. Precious stones and diamonds used to cover the palace until the Indian Rebellion of 1857, where they were looted by British soldiers and government officials. Well, that was the Taj Mahal. Definitely doesn't look high, but it was stunning, especially when the sun actually came through the clouds and lit it up and you had a reflection of water. It was just perfect. Taj Mahal alternate photo shoot. Even though it's quite crowded, there's still plenty of space for everyone to get their photo done. As I was saying earlier, the temptation to go around and just photobomb everyone is so high. The temptation is strong, which is fun. <laughs> just ruin everyone's Stop holiday. Jen is, I'll be back, I'll be back, I'll be back. It's too tempting. <laughs> Since we were all tired from the early start, we spent the rest of the day just chilling at the hostel before I caught my train to Jaipur in the morning. Well, it's an hour and a half late, but the train's finally going to arrive. Let me show you where I'm staying. I'm in the AC2 class, it's one below the first class, but it's still pretty nice. I've got six hours just chilling out on here, which is pretty sweet actually. Just put the feet up, relax, and get some sleep. I can listen to some music, watch a movie, do some editing, or best of all, just sit here and watch India go past. I mean, at the minute, it's, uh, it's very rural, very rural. It's cool actually, I feel like I'm in it now. I'm actually properly traveling through India. Yeah, just happy watching India go by and then looking forward to getting to Jaipur. I arrived in Jaipur late afternoon and the following morning I set out to see the sights. Alright, we're in the first full day in Jaipur. Here with Bianca. Bianca was in the queue with me for Taj Mahal and then I lost her, but we won't lose each other today. That's right. Until we go out tonight, then it might get a bit crazy again. Had some good street food last night, cooking it there, it's recommended from Lonely Planet. Now there's a little typo on the menu for the drink. I hope it's a typo. A bit of a diet cock. Diet cock, yeah. <laughs> so naturally that's what I've ordered. <laughs> <laughs> I had one of the most disgusting drinks of my life at this bar, beer shampoo. It was great, uh, it did the job. It did the job. So yeah, headed to Amber Fort first, and then maybe a couple other places, and then hope to do Monkey Temple for sunset, and then back on the drink. That's the plan. Okay, made it to the Amber Fort, and first impression <laughs> is wow. All right, Bianca, give us some facts. Go. All right, ooh, one second. <laughs> <laughs> this is my Bible. <laughs> this magnificent fort is largely made up of a royal palace built from pale yellow and pink sandstone and white marble, and divided into four main sections, each with its own courtyard. Very exciting. <laughs> you can do elephant riding, but animal welfare groups have criticised the keeping of elephants at Amber. So you see the uh, pink and white marble <laughs> up there, and what was the other thing? The lattice work. The lattice work, just, just spectacular. That's where the women could look down onto the palace. That's where the women could look down onto the palace. <laughs> They're hidden so no one can see them. Ah, I see, right, yeah. So women would hide up there so no one could see them and they just look down. I expect credit. You're not getting any credit. <laughs> I'm just going to cut you out the entire thing. Okay. <laughs> it's a tunnel leading to the other palace. We think? We hope? Um, I'm not too sure. I was worried we were going to walk for a while and just get if I hit a dead end. 
Well, we were right, that tunnel did lead somewhere. And we nearly made it to the top. Nearly there. You can do it. Can't you can wait. Do it. Yes! <laughs> Definitely worth it, definitely worth it, that's amazing. After walking up here in the hot sun, we decided to be lazy and just get a tuk-tuk back down into town. What are you getting? I have no idea. I'm not supposed to have fresh fruits and vegetables apparently, but I'm just skipping that roll. <laughs> the next day, we went to explore the bazaars in the old part of town, which is known as a pink city because many of the buildings here are pink. We are spending the afternoon exploring the pink city. Just having a little wander around. Gonna try and buy some stuff. What are you gonna try and buy? Maybe some scarves, some scarves, skirt. Yeah, try and assimilate. Assimilate the culture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get the entire dress. I want one. Uh -huh. I'm gonna get some Ray Bans and a belt for some jeans, so. Yeah, slightly different goals, but there you go. So beautiful, so many colours. Yeah, so gross. Oh, there's one up there as well. Just oh, up. yeah. It literally is a pigsty. It's just... What you got? A lassie. Finally starving after that long walk, but... Sweet. Made it. Got some lassie for myself. Consistency's a bit weird, but you know, you'll get used to it. That evening, we had one last site to visit, the Monkey Temple. Okay, this is the Monkey Temple, so we're at the right place, it's just a bit further to the monkeys. But uh, yeah, it got blessed or something, something happened, we donated and it said nice things, so that was good. That's, she's put for both of us, so I, have to, I don't have to change, she's... You have to change how much? I don't have, she just put down for... Excuse me, madam. Monkeys. We are literally surrounded by monkeys. That is so cool. That's so cute. I love them. Watch them all day. Yeah. It's like hundreds of them on the hill. See, look here. This is here the Hanuman. There's a lot of Hanuman. There's a monkey god. It's naturally shaped in the rock in the mountain. 700 year old. So, people that come in the most of we pray for the Hanuman for the life protection. Life, many problems. So, pray, protection, and blessing of life. There's good luck and good karma. Absolutely love the Monkey Temple though. Favourite thing I've done in Jaipur. Just so beautiful. You like them? Yeah. You like your monkeys? So gorgeous. <laughs> They're beautiful. We're getting tired walking up this hill. We just look at them bouncing out on their head. Like, all right, you win. Lakadi jungle me binu gi me to Mero ko khane ke bhi chahiye re Bhaiya Brilliant. Amanido. Oh, of course. <laughs> Perfect end to the day, just gonna sit here, enjoy the amazing <laughs> view of Jaipur, it's just beautiful. The breeze is perfect, yeah. it's quiet. Life is good. About 5.50 and then suddenly all like the call to prayers started all across town. And it's weird, it's like it's a competition of just sounds going across town, all wailing away. A minute ago all we could hear was car horns and now all we can hear is, is them singing. It's crazy. It was beautiful, the sky is so bright now. It's really right, first overnight train to Jai Salma. And the trains have been here in 20 minutes, but this platform is just crazy. Just tons of people just sleeping on the floor. I don't know how long they've been waiting here, but it's pretty mad. Twelve hour journey to Jai Salma. I think it should be alright. See you on the other side. Jai Salma lies in the deserts of Rajasthan, just 100 kilometers from the border with Pakistan. 
I'm here in Jai Salma and I've checked into the hostel and there's no one here, which is a bit of a shame really. I was sort of feeling really good when I got on the train. I met tons of cool people so far and I was like, right, new place, new hostel, new people, new adventure. Got here, it's dead, it's deserted. And I've signed up for a two day camel safari, which is gonna be incredible. But right now I'm the only person that signed up. So we'll have to see what happens. But for now, I'm gonna go explore the town and see what's what. Come to the right spot, I've got an amazing view of the city and I've just had about 20 different people that's have a photo with me, which is pretty sweet. Makes you feel kind of special. Wandering around the streets here kind of reminds me of the town Akraba from Aladdin. It's basically like I'm walking around in Aladdin, which is pretty cool. People that seem a lot more friendly here, like they just want to say hello. Still a few people trying to sell you stuff, it's not as mad as the other places. Ganesh Travel, Jess Lamed doing best camel safari in town. Please check it out, okay? It's a camel man office. Nice Don't one. miss it. <laughs> Can I see my friend? My name is Deepak. Deepak. And I'm running the cooperative shop here. Okay, cool. Process assist women in particular widows who make all the stuff in the desert. So nice, the guy just gave me a little tour of his shop, a little talk to camera about what he does. If the woman is very young and man is very old, all those women they're becoming quickly widow. So how they can feed their family and children. So I give them a walk. So it's like a cooperative shop, you know. I'm a part of fair trade in England in Birmingham. Let me look around the shop. It didn't pressure me into buying anything. So refreshing. What a nice guy. So well done to you, mate. Well done. So I'm just about to start the two-day camel safari, which is one of the things I've been most looking forward to on this trip. Here's our camels. Meet Saro Khan. It's my ride for the next few days. How are you feeling, buddy? You good? We're connecting. No one else has signed up for it, so I'm gonna be doing this by myself. Just be me and the one or two guides, whoever many people come along. So uh, it could be amazing, it could be awesome. I mean, some people pay high premium to have a private tour, but the flip side is, you know, it's it's nice to be traveling with other people, these things, and shared experiences, and have some banter along the way, and it makes it more fun. So, oh, I'll have to see, but I'm excited nonetheless. It's gonna be, it's definitely gonna be an experience one way or the other. So let's just go do it. Jackie up front. Say hello, Jackie. Thank you. <laughs> nice little spot for lunch. Little rest. Say hello. Jackie's preparing a lovely meal for us. As long as the goats don't try and get it first. The food was absolutely delicious, but my god am I full. It's kind of like almost like an eating contest, he's put so much effort into it just to cook it for me. As he just keep eating and eating and eating. But yeah, so good. Like one of the best meals I've had, and look where we are. As we were finishing lunch, Jackie got a call from another guide who was traveling with just two backpackers. So we decided to go meet up with them. So we're properly out in the desert now in the sand dunes and it's just awesome. But we're just having a much needed rest after riding for like, I don't know, just an hour because I'm in pain. It's like your groin hurts so much after a while on there. So I definitely think I'm gonna have a full body massage when I get back. And I mean full body because, whew, but it's a lot of fun. It's good fun. What have you cooked for them, Ali? Mixed veg. Mixed huh? veg? Oh, that's for me. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Have you boys enjoyed your four days? Well, Very much so. Very much, yeah. How's the groin? Mm. <laughs> Getting better. Yeah. Mm. You said the first two days are hard, but then you've after that it's Those fine. Those are a bummer. Second day is hard uh -huh. on the balls. Bummer. <laughs> Can't wait for tomorrow though. <laughs> <laughs> this is a um, takeaway delivery. 
in the desert. So a guy comes with beer, Chris, sells it cheaper than the hostel. How far do you walk? How far is it to walk? Like village. Before you see ah, village, ah, ah. come to there, here. Wow. That's about two hours away um, on camel. Two hours on camel to bring us beer. And it's still cold. Yeah, it's still cold as well. Thank you very much, man. Yeah. Good man. No idea what to expect from today. It's kind of to show, like, you know, this morning's a bit apprehensive because I'm doing it by myself and what's it going to be like, but just fucking go for it. Things work out. This is our campsite for the night. Not too bad a spot at all, I'd say. We had last night. Yeah, you know, we're just chilling by the fire and stuff, and that was all good fun. But when I went to bed, didn't go to sleep at first. I just lay there for an hour, put some music on, and just sat there and watched the stars for like an hour. It's just insane. I saw like four shooting stars, and my camera could pick them up pretty well when I'm videoing. But when I took a picture, it was just phew, unreal. So I think this morning we're just riding back through the desert and then get back to Jai Salma and chill out for the afternoon. I think that's the plan. Bye bye! Okay, well, bye. <laughs> well, after an incredible night of camping, back on the camels, got one hour of riding through the desert until I get picked up. Had an awesome night. Jackie, you have a good night last night? Yeah, very good. Very, very good. Running now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's the end of our safari. Yeah, you did a good job. Didn't you? We had fun. Still connecting. It's my man Jackie. Jackie looked after me last two days. He's a good man. He said, yeah. Jackie said on the first day, I'm not his guest, I'm his brother. And he's been absolutely awesome. So if you come here, ask for Jackie. It wasn't long before I was back in Jai Salma and the hostel was now filled with backpackers. So a few of us went out for an evening meal before I caught my train in the morning. My next stop was Jodhpur, which is known as a blue city. And let's see if you can figure out why. The town has another magnificent fort, but instead of going for a guided tour, I decided it'd be way more fun to go around it on a zip line. Number two. <laughs> this next one is low. You want a push? Yeah, why not? I will not touch you, but I will give you a push. Okay. Team one to go. Ready for the last zip line. Back over there. That was awesome, mate. Eh? Awesome. You guys know what they're doing. <laughs> Cheers. You enjoy it? <laughs> Best way to see the fort in Jopa. I had one last stop on my northern leg of India. And since there were no direct trains, I booked an overnight bus to get to a diaper. When you book it, it says, do you want lower upper deck? So I'm thinking it's going to be two floors of the bus, like in South America. Those are the two decks. It's not, it's not two levels of bus, it's just two decks. Hopefully this goes to a diaper. We're just going to sit down and watch everything turns out all right. But yeah. So there's actually the other side, like double seats. If you're in there, you're sitting two by two overnight. I'm gonna watch a movie and then see if I get any sleep at all. I don't know. 
my back's down there, my main back. It's all, <laughs> it's all locked up, so it's actually all right. Hopefully it won't be this bumpy all the night. I'm hoping this is just shitty, shitty city roads once we get on the main road. It'll be fine. This is not how you get a night's sleep at all. Well, that bus journey was the most miserable night ever. Didn't even get one second of sleep because it's just like being thrown around in the tumble dry, like the bumpiest road ever, and just smacking my head off the ceiling. It was just ridiculous. And now I've got to the hostel, and I told them I'd be arriving this time, but I get here, and the doors don't even open for another half an hour. And I can't call the manager because I've got no phone signal, so I just gotta wait around out here for half an hour. I've now been waiting here an hour and a half. I emailed them yesterday saying I'd be arriving at six in the morning. And they said, yeah, that's fine. We'll be happy to welcome you in. Of course, they open at six, but no answer. No one's answering the doorbell, nothing. So I've been stuck here all day. That's sort of useless. Well, yesterday was a complete write-off because by the time I actually finally got in the hostel, I was just too knackered to do anything, so I just slept and chilled out there. Um, but the staff were good, like, uh, to apologise, they gave me some free beer, so they know what I like. Uh, but Adipa is beautiful, it's such a gorgeous town, it almost has like a European quality to it. I'm not actually going to do much here, I've just been wandering around, taking it easy because it's the end of my first three weeks of the trip, and end of the first half, and these three weeks have just been going bang, bang, bang from one place to another. Seen so many different things, made some really cool friends, and yeah, it's been great fun, but it's been quite exhausting as well, so I'm looking forward to getting down south to Goa, changing up the pace. Just look at that view. Look where we are. For you, for you. Yeah, for you. All right, got these bikes for the day. <laughs> Places like it, just a giant playground of boulders and old ruins, and temples. I love it. And this is something else that's pretty spectacular. We're just soaring above the trees, like the palm trees come right past you. You can nearly like pick a coconut off. 